How do you guys like my syncopation happened? So what's up guys? Um, first of all, I want to apologize for not making a video in a few weeks. I've been swamped in paperwork and buried with this and done that, blah, 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 blah. No more excuses. Anyway, uh, I wanted to do something a little different uh, for this video. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember watching my video, my intro to Asperger's or Asperger's intro video I did, where one of the things I said in that video was uh, that I wanted to make this channel uh, unique in the sense where I wanted to cover topics about Asperger's and autism that are not normally covered, things you wouldn't normally think of covering. Um, so far, I haven't been doing that. Everything I've done so far is, oh, stereotypes about Asperger's this, oh, social skills that, oh, meltdowns this. So, you know what, I haven't been keeping my word, and I want to actually do something a little different this time. I want to talk about the inner world. Mike, what the fuck is the inner world? Well, I'm going to tell you. The inner world is that place. Everybody has their own inner world. The inner world is that place inside your head where you go to, where you have inner, inner dialogue, inner monologue, where you imagine, where you daydream, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. And the thing is that people with uh, autism and Asperger's and ADHD, which I comorbidly have as well, their inner worlds tend to be a lot more diverse. Uh, their inner worlds tend to be a lot more intense. Uh, and their inner worlds tend to be a lot more encompassing in their daily, everyday life. Uh, their inner worlds, a lot of times, are a part of their lives. I mean, everybody's inner worlds are a part of their lives. But in people with autism, especially Asperger's, and to a lesser extent ADHD, their inner world is a little more prime. Uh, it's, it's a little more prime. And that's actually uh, it's one of the defining features of autism and Asperger's is the inner world. And it's not covered very often. They, it's not, for some reason, it's just not talked about. And my inner world uh, encompasses a lot of different scenarios, different places, different people, some real, some fictitious, and some imaginary created by yours truly. Uh, it takes place at uh, different times, and basically, uh, I live I live a double life. I live in the real world, I live in modern every day here and now, and I live in my inner world. And they're both very important to me in different ways. <clears throat> and I mean, everybody's inner world is important to them, but, I, you know, speaking on behalf of myself, I say that my inner world is uh, is incredibly important to me, and I would never do without it. Damn, that's some good wine. The thing about the inner world is it's used as an escape, but it's also, I think, subconsciously created by uh, by the mind as a defense mechanism, as, as something to fall back on. And a lot of times in, in, uh, in times of stress or hardship, I, I, I fall into my inner world. Sometimes, uh, involuntarily, I fall into my inner world. And actually, you know, there's a theory that, and this is just a theory, that w what autism is, is a uh, subconscious defense mechanism uh, created by the mind to protect from too much sensory input, which explains why, you know, people on the autistic spectrum, they have this inner world. And everybody does, like I said, everybody has an inner world, but especially people with autism and Asperger syndrome. And in my inner world, uh, you know, I'm always in the inner world, I'm always in the outer world. Uh, I'm trying to put this in, in neurotypical speak so you guys can follow along and, uh, with everything I'm saying. But um, a lot of times when, you know, I'm in a stressful situation or something is stressful or, or I'm bored or there's too much sensory in, uh, in, in, input, I'll get sunk into my inner world, or if I'm in a situation that uh, I'm having trouble with, I'll think, well, what would, how would I handle this in my inner world, or how would the, an, a, a person in my inner world, a character in my inner world, handle this, or how would this be handled in a different place and time in my inner world? Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I just got sunk into my inner world. But... I think my theory, and I don't know if this is true or not, but 
people with Asperger's and ADHD, they have an inner world that's a little more well-defined, a little more vivid than so, so-called neurotypical people. And I think that people with full-blown autism, uh, you know, people who don't even communicate, I think that they're fully immersed in their inner world. And, and it, you know, that's, and that's why they can't function in the real world, perhaps. They're so immersed in their inner world. And one of the things that I, I wonder is that people with full-blown autism who can't communicate in the real world and don't seem to even be all there in the real world, do they still communicate in their inner world? Do they communicate with people, uh, beings in their inner world? Do they actually have scenarios in their inner world that are very vivid, so vivid that it takes over their entire existence to where the real world doesn't even really exist for them? You see where I'm going from? But, I don't know. I just think that the inner world that everybody has, but especially, it, which is a defining feature of the autistic spectrum disorders, is something that needs to be talked about more. And especially the theory that one of the, the cause of autism, what autism is, is the body, the mind subconsciously uh, preventing oversensory stimulation by enhancing an inner world to block out everything else. I don't remember who the hell told me that. I, I read it somewhere, but someone else, I, maybe my mom, my mom is a mental health counselor. I think she was the one who actually told me this a while ago. But I always thought that was a very interesting theory. And in my personal opinion, I think it might actually hold some truth to it. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, I used to work at a Home Depot years ago. And uh, I remember I was in the garden center doing this and doing that. And, a, and a, a, a woman walked in and she had a young daughter. Her daughter maybe was like eight or nine or ten years old. And the daughter is like playing with this and talking to the plant here. And her hand is like, my hand is a character and blah, blah, blah. And right away I could tell that, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I have great Aspie dar, autism dar, whatever, you know. You know, gay people have gaydar, you know, I, I have aspidar, I can usually spot someone who's on the spectrum. But anyway, looking at this girl, uh, I can tell that she has some form of autism and she was fully immersed in her inner world. And like I said, with people with Asperger's and autism, it's very vivid sometimes. Um, so vivid that I actually get lost in it myself. And one of the things I do is talk to myself. And when I'm talking to myself, uh, a lot of times I talk to myself like a normal human being does, everybody talks to themselves, but a lot of times I talk I'm speaking out loud, uh, you know, in my inner world. Like, I'm talking about to somebody in my inner world. Um, and it alarms people, and I have to remind them, listen, I'm not schizophrenic. Not that there's anything wrong with schizophrenic people. I'm not schizophrenic. I, you know, I know that, that my imaginary friends and the people in my head are not real. But sometimes I just get very immersed, and that's all there is to it. And... And I want to ask anybody else who's watching this, whether you're autistic or ADHD or Asperger's or quote-unquote neurotypical, uh, you know, if you have any experiences with an inner, your inner world, uh, tell me what it is. Tell me how your inner world affects your everyday life um, and this and that. Uh, I'm going to wrap this video up now because uh, I overdid it with my last few videos. I just dragged on and on and on and the hell on. And I wanted to just make this one kind of short and sweet and just lay down a couple things here and there. So, um, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or any constructive, constructive criticism, please uh, state it. And if you have any video suggestions whatsoever about anything at all, please let me know. And uh, I'm, I promise you that for the next number of videos or as many videos as possible, I will try to cover topics that are a little more interesting and that are not normally covered when it comes to autism and Asperger's. So, with all that being said, I'd like to wish you guys a pleasant journey, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.